Hey church, it's Pastor Joel, and today is Good Friday. It always feels a little bit strange to say that, because the story that we read on this day is such a horrific one. And yet, what happens on this day is ultimately very good for all of us. And I think that that's part of why it's called Good Friday. I also know that sometimes people connect the word good and the word God, even though they don't actually have the same roots in our language. But I like the idea of thinking this of this not as Good Friday necessarily, but as God Friday, because that is where our focus should be, is on what God was up to on this day, what God was doing. So I want to share a little bit of the crucifixion story from the Gospel of John, and I want you to focus on what God is doing this Friday. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the Place of the Skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This story has so many people in it. It tells us that Jesus is crucified. It tells us how they put him between two other people, how Pilate ordered that there be a, 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 a sign made and how the chief priests were upset about the sign. And, and it can be easy to get distracted on what God is doing here. But as we continue to read, there's this wonderful moment. Jesus looks down from the cross, and he sees his mother, and he sees the disciple whom he loves, and he says, this is your son, this is your mother. I've always loved this part of the crucifixion story. Even in the midst of Jesus' own suffering and death, he's concerned about other people. Indeed, his very suffering and death is all about what he can and will do for all the world, always focused on other people. But there's this beautiful moment where he's focused on making sure that his mother's taken care of. And so he says to this disciple, here is your mother. And it says that from then on, she went and lived in this disciple's house and he cared for her. Here is your mother. Here is your son. Jesus is worried about his mom and this disciple, even in the midst of his own suffering. On Good Friday, on this day when we focus on what God is doing, what God is doing is always focused not on what is good for him, but on what is good for others. It is a good Friday because God is at work and God is always focused on the good of others. And this day is good for us. But it's also, as always, an invitation for us to also do good for others, to offer ourselves, to not be concerned about our own well-being, but to always have of utmost concern the well-being of others. And so I invite you once again to commit yourself wholeheartedly as you focus on this day, on what God was doing that was so good, to also focus on doing good with your own life. Will you please pray with me? 
God, we do ask that you would help us once again to focus on you today and then to go out and do good because you have indeed done the most good ever through the cross and through your Son, Jesus Christ. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Thanks. We'll see you again tomorrow.